Welcome to the Free From Wall Street Podcast, where we share how we have done over $200 million in real estate deals to create, preserve, and pass on generational wealth without the roller coaster ride of the stock market. If you're ready to start investing with purpose, visit FreeFromWallStreet.com. But for now, let's dive into this episode. Welcome back to the Free From Wall Street Podcast. My name is Stephen Libman, and I am your host. Today, we're going to be talking about the questions you've always wanted to ask other investors in a real estate syndication. So many hands make light work. That's what a real estate syndication is. It's a group investment. Sometimes, though, it feels like you're on an island. You might be able to talk to me as the sponsor, right, Integrity Holdings, and you're talking to me and my team, but you're maybe one of 50 other people investing in some of our deals, and you're not necessarily talking to those folks. And if you're not in touch with them, sometimes it can make you feel like, hey, I wonder what they're asking. So often we do do webinars together uh, with a bunch of our investors, and that way you get the benefit of meeting some of the people that you're going to be co-investing with and hearing some of the questions that they're asking us uh, because sometimes they have questions that you might not even know to ask. So today, I'm going to satisfy your curiosity of addressing a couple of questions that you've been thinking about potentially other people asking. Number one, what is a limited partner investor? Two, what makes a limited partner limited? How many passive investors are there in a real estate syndication? Hint, it varies. Four, how are the investors in real estate, how, who are the investors, sorry, in a real estate syndication? And then how can I meet and talk to other passive investors? So exciting topic today. I, this is how we first got into the business, by the way, as limited partners. So number one, what is a limited partner investor? Limited partner investors in a real estate syndication are people just like you who want to invest in real estate without the hassles of being a landlord. That's the whole purpose of doing these things, right? These passive limited partners and then the capital that they commit are the most important part of the syndication, right? We tell our investors this all the time. We're, we're doing the work, but they're the most important part of the team. If a syndication were a car, the limited partner would be the gas. Without, without the gas, the car's not going anywhere. So, even though you're going to be in reviewing the investment summary and wiring your funds by yourself, it is important to remember that you're part of a community of investors diving into this project together. Most people investing passively in a syndication never have or never will meet each other. But for the duration of the project, their money is pooled together to improve an asset, improve the community around it, and produce income for their families and the families of the other investors. So what makes a limited partner limited? The word limited in the phrase limited partner investors refers to the amount of liability in the project being limited. So in a syndication project, there are general partners and then there are limited partners. The general partners, us, we assume the majority of the risk and the active responsibility role while limited partners invest capital. They're not actively involved in the improvements and property management, nor are they held liable if anything goes wrong. So limited has everything to do with the liability and risk and nothing to do with kind of the projected returns. So, I mean, in fact, most of our investors are making, you know, 50%, 60%, 70% of the cash flows than the general partners. Um, and typically the, the limited partners get paid first. So we've talked about preferred positions in the past. So uh, a lot of the investor returns for limited partners start out as at least a portion of them being in a preferred position. So not a bad deal. And this is why Kiyosaki talks in the cash flow quadrant about being in that investor quadrant. So how many passive investors are there in a real estate syndication? So, you know, it varies. It depends on a variety of factors, how much capital is needed. We've done some deals where we only needed to raise a million dollars from outside investors because it was a smaller project. Um, and then we've done deals, 12, 15 million dollars. So it really depends on how much capital is needed, how much each person invests, and then if there's a minimum, right? So if we have a $50,000 minimum, then more people, right? If there's a hundred, $250,000 minimum, less people. So there's plenty of investors who commit the minimum amount required, typically 100K. But this means for every million dollars raised, we need 10 people to invest, right? So some investors may contribute more, right? We have uh, some investors that do multiple seven figures, 
depends on the investor. So in a $10 million real estate syndication, there could be as many as 200 passive investors. That is not likely. I mean, I think the largest syndication deal that we have so far is probably 50 um, passive investors. So, And then who are these investors that are going into a real estate syndication? So one of the coolest features of real estate is that pretty much anybody can get involved. Anybody in any stage of life, we have college graduates, like fresh college graduates, to highly experienced investors with decades of experience. All kinds of different professions, young families, older families, uh, people that are retired. Um, we have people on pastoral staff. We have business owners. There is just no... Um, it's a low barrier to entry in terms of like who can get involved. So we love the idea that we can help others build wealth while improving a community and they don't have to be the landlord. So finally, how can I meet and talk to other passive investors? So, you know, when you're talking about the idea of investing with a new partner like us, it's a great thing to go out and ask them for references and referrals and to say, you know, can I talk to a couple of people that are involved with you and find out what it's like to work with a sponsor, ask for those references and then find out what other people's experiences have been, right? It's not a, just a great way to learn more about the sponsor, but a great opportunity to chat with somebody who was in your shoes not too long ago, right? Because before somebody invested in real estate syndication, stands to reason that they were new as well. So, um, it really creates some camaraderie and some understanding and you'll be able to ask questions about their experiences and get some insight into real estate syndications in general and then the deal that they're in specifically. You know, here at Integrity Holdings Group, we're very aware of the power of community. So we're always encouraging you to continue to read, learn about investing, listening to podcasts like this are always helpful. If, um, if you're reading different books about real estate syndication, um, so you never know. Maybe one day you want to become an experienced investor on the other end of the phone sharing your experience with the soon-to-be investor asking you questions. So just exploring some of these common curiosity questions, it's likely that you've gotten a better sense of what a passive, limited partner investor really is. They're people. They're people just like you, probably with kids. If you've been listening to this podcast, hollering mom or dad from the other room, <laughs> trying to get an idea of how to more passively invest in real estate. So they're normal folks who wrinkle their forehead at the confusing legal jargon that we talk about in these private placement memorandums. Everyday citizens who nervously triple check the wiring instructions as they send out their first 50 or 100K. There are the same neighbors who stare in disbelief at their first cash flow distribution check as they start to grasp the power of these real estate deals, getting monthly and quarterly checks in the mail consistently. So the next time you begin to feel lost or lonely while flipping through an investment deck or think that you're the only one with questions, you are not alone. Reach out to us, reach out to our community, reach out to some of our other investors. You're in a community of investors who feel the same way that you do. We're trying to do the right thing by our families. We're trying to build wealth and make a positive impact on the community in the process. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you for listening to the Free From Wall Street podcast. If you're getting value from this, can you please subscribe and leave a rating for us? And uh, until next time. Thanks for listening to the Free From Wall Street podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review and let us know what you think.